Good morning, everybody. I've removed all of the clamps from my Forster bit holder and I'm ready to move on. I wanted to address a comment that a lot of you had yes on yesterday's video about assembling this. And a lot of you suggested that I attach the quarter inch plywood and the three quarter inch plywood with some carpet tape or something to hold them together. And then what I could do is just drill a pilot hole through all of these pieces that would mark essentially both boards. So then I could remove the two pieces, cut out these holes, and then I would be able to drill exactly where the lower holes go. But I, that's something I, I definitely thought about doing it that way. And again, this is probably something that I'm just overthinking it, and I think that's, that is probably the best way to do this. But when I was thinking it through, I thought, well, once I separate these two pieces, then it becomes critical that they're lined up again perfectly when I glue them back, when I glue it together. And the problem I always face with that is that when I glue something together, it might slip and slide a little bit. The edges might not be completely flush. I can even <clears throat> tell right now that these edges aren't completely flush, so I need to square those up a little bit. And my concern was that if this top layer wasn't completely lined up with the bottom layer, if it was a little off on this one, it might be way off down on this one, and then those two wouldn't line up. It probably wouldn't have played out that way, but that was my thought process. So this method probably won't take that much more time, but at least I know that all of these shank holes are going to be centered. But you guys are always filled with good suggestions. I love reading through the comments and it's one of the advantages of making these videos in multiple parts is that I can read your suggestions and then implement them. At least some of the time. There was a great suggestion from John Lafferty who suggested that I cut out a piece of foam to fit in the bottom of this and that would eliminate any of the kind of wiggling around of the bits in there. And I think that's like my favorite suggestion. I just don't know if I have access to any foam right now. I guess that's something I could add at a later date too. You know, I just ordered on Amazon or whatever and then just cut it to size. These last four are going to be a little bit more challenging. This one, 3 8 inch bit, the head is the same size as the shank, so that's the same size as that hole. So that'll just drill all the way through. Uh, I might have to figure out something on that. This 3 8 inch bit has a thinner shank, so I can still use my same method of supporting it. Then on these quarter inch ones, now this is gonna be another problem. It looks like the head is the same size as the shank on this one, but this one has a bigger shank than the hole. The head is real small up here, so I don't know. I'm gonna give this one some thought. And there's a few different shank sizes on these bits. These first five, the five largest bits, have a 5 8 inch shank. So I'll drill those out first. Another thing I'm noticing is the variations between the two different brands of bits. So these are both 7 8 inch bits and they each have a presumably 3 8 inch shank. So this one, the Grizzly, won't fit into that 3 8 inch hole without forcing it in, whereas this other brand slides in nicely. In addition to that, I've noticed kind of paper thin differences between the diameters of one and the other, at least on some sizes. On this 3 8 inch bit, that's a 3 8 inch bit to bore these holes, they're identical. 
So one way or another, I just have to enlarge some of these holes a little bit. I think it's important to keep in mind that woodworking doesn't require tolerances that tight anyway. So I doubt if that will ever become an issue. Possibly if I needed to drill a hole that a dowel would fit into in just a perfect way. But that also could be variations in the diameter of the dowel. It's one of the reasons I like woodworking is because there's a lot more wiggle room to it than you know, other types of maybe metal fabricating or machining. So what I decided to do is just kind of ream these out a little bit with a regular drill bit. Well, these smaller holes turned out to be a real hodgepodge of sizes. So at the weirdest one is this quarter inch bit that has the large shank so i guess it's just going to drop down there and it's just going to have to fit loosely like that unless i put it in this way but i, I don't really want to do that because i want to be able to see the head this one this quarter inch one will fit in fine but again once it gets down to that part it's going to be loose but not so big of a deal i don't think a couple different sizes here this one will drop in like all of the bits but this one turns out to be the shank is the same size as the head. So the whole thing is just gonna drop in like that. There's no stop. And then I just had to ream out these various ones here. I cut out these two supports and see how it fits. It's a test. A oh, little bit too much. Let me shave a little bit off of those. Oh yeah, we've got clearance. Wow, I'm really glad I left that blank area back there because that means I can just pull the drawer out and stop it like that. That one's gonna be a problem. I think I have a solution for that, but first I want to assemble this. I'm just gonna screw this down onto those sides. So these smallest six are the oddballs and it looks like they'll fit fine. It's not like this is going to fall out of there. So I think that'll be okay. And same goes for the rest of these. This one's a little weird, but again, it's not gonna fall out of there. This is the odd one here that just drops all the way down because it's so short. So. I think the only thing I need to do here is just put a little block under there. You know what? I think it makes more sense to glue this into the bottom of the drawer, where I have more surface area for the glue. Let's put a little spacer in here and then figure out where that goes. Looks like about... So I'm labeling all of these with just a ballpoint pen. I've experimented with different ways of labeling things in the past and I found that one of the worst ways is a Sharpie because a Sharpie will just, it will fade actually pretty quickly, especially if it was out in the sunlight. Being in a drawer, it would probably be all right. But in my experience, if you want to hand label something and you want it to last, especially if it's out exposed to the sunlight, is use a pencil and cover it up with lacquer, polyurethane, or whatever. Pencil graphite just lasts for a long, long time. I don't think it ever fades. Also, I sanded this top down with 220 grit sandpaper before writing these on there. 
I've got an antique dresser, a chest of drawers. It's been in my family for a few hundred years. And on the back of it is some, some writing in pencil. And that was probably put there about around a hundred years ago. And it doesn't have any protection over it. Well, that turned out super satisfying. I just love it when everything just works. Once in a while that happens. Hey, quick reminder, if you'd like to set up your own workshop, regardless of how small your space is, check out my course, The Weekend Workshop. In that course, I take you step-by-step step through the entire process of setting up a shop or reorganizing an existing shop. I cover everything from good lighting to air quality to establishing a good workflow. Plus, we've got 14 projects in that course to get you completely set up, just about every Every piece of shop furniture you see in my shop is in that course. Head over to theweekendworkshop.com to check out everything that's in that course. It's jam-packed with stuff. And it makes a great gift. Father's Day is right around the corner, you know. That's all I got for today. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.